Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today I have another episode of The Naked Gun. This is a series where I choose a weapon, I use absolutely no attachments, hence the Naked Gun title, and then I give my thoughts and opinions on it. Why I like it, why I dislike it, how it kind of performs with its bare bone essentials, and uh, for today I'm going to be using the AUG A3. Many of you are probably already aware that this was introduced in the Close Quarter DLC, and even though I am playing on PC, DICE screwed up. I'm not even sure if they, uh, if they confirmed that they screwed up, but they gave the weapons early for PC, but not Xbox 360. We're going to get all of the maps for both platforms uh, in a couple of days now. I think it's on Monday or Tuesday, one of those days, and then everyone will finally get to play with all the close quarter stuff if you bought the premium service or if you just buy the expansion. Um, it kind of sucks for Xbox, but that's just a whole another story. Uh, but with regards to the AUG, I'm really enjoying it. As you can see here, the iron sights are not too shabby. I would not say that they are the best in the game, but they are far from the worst. If, if you've ever used the FAMAS or the AN-94, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But when you're aimed down sight, the iron sights don't really obstruct your vision that much. You can still see in your peripherals very well. Uh, you can also line up the target pretty easily. There are some occasions where if you are firing, you, can, you may lose your target on occasion with that slim iron sight in the middle. Uh, but really, to be honest, I believe that the iron sights are going to be inferior on any weapon. I'm not going to really use them on a gun because they obstruct your vision. And if you use the red dot sight, that is just going to give you a lot more field of view. It's not going to obstruct your vision. And when you go for any target that's out there, you don't want to have something blocking your view. And that's really on any iron sight, you're going to have that problem. So, uh, you know, while the iron sights are so-so, and I definitely did not have too much of a problem with it, I still would recommend some sort of uh, red dot sight or some sort of scope used on this weapon. Uh, one thing I was having a little bit difficulty getting used to was its horizontal recoil. The side-to-side -side recoil on some on some kills was a little unmanageable and I found it a little difficult to stay on target. There were some instances where I just felt like the weapon was a laser beam, I could stay on target and go for really long shots, but then all of a sudden the weapon would start wobbling back and forth, I'm like, no, no, no! What are you, what are you doing? Like, stay on target. You know, you, you were so awesome just a second ago for that last kill. Why are you bouncing around all of a sudden? And that was one thing that kind of bothered me about the AUG. Like I said, it wasn't that large of an issue and I could get around it. And really what I try to do because of that, uh, that horizontal recoil was to play a, uh, closer to the match. You know, this is a slower RPM weapon, but it's not terrible so that if you do get into a close encounter engagement, you're not just going to get blown away. So I was just, I was trying to play a little bit closer to the enemy. I wasn't trying to go for those long, those long ball shots. Maybe more in the medium range. So when that uh, that horizontal kick did uh, kick in, quite literally, I didn't uh, have too much of a problem taking out the enemy. But it was something that bothered me, and it was something I had to get used to uh, when I was going for those longer range shots. Uh, that being said though, the vertical recoil on this weapon is almost non-existent. The only thing I really had to compensate for, like I said, was that side-to-side -side recoil. So if you had that lucky streak where there really wasn't a lot of deviation there side-to-side, -side, you know, this thing is a, is a laser beam and it's a lot of fun to use because it, the vertical recoil on this thing, like I said, is almost non-existent. Uh, something that I really appreciated about this weapon is that it is a bullpup and what that means to you is that when you're aimed down sight you are going to be moving faster than most weapons and so when you were kind of peeking around a corner you're going to move out real fast, take that shot, take that person out unexpectedly and then move behind cover before anyone can take you out. And that's something that I really liked about those long range corridor shots like on Grand Bazaar. You could take a quick peek take the shot, then move back in and rinse and repeat like that and get a lot of kills. So that's something I really liked about this weapon. Uh, as for some attachments that I would recommend, I was mostly sticking with the heavy barrel. Because the weapon has a slow RPM, it's going to perform a lot better at those long to medium range engagements. And the heavy barrel is just going to uh, kind of complement that even more and going to uh, increase your effectiveness in those circumstances. If you're having some difficulty controlling the horizontal or side to side recoil, I would also slap on the foregrip. It's going to reduce that a little bit and make it a little bit more manageable but just remember it's going to increase your bullet spread at longer ranges so you're not going to be as effective at those long range shots but if you're trying to play you know at that medium range or you're trying to play the medium game and trying to stay a little bit up close to your enemy the foregrip will be a perfect attachment for you. Uh, but that's it for today's Naked Gun, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, if you enjoyed or you want to support my channel, giving this video a thumbs up is always appreciated. And also subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, guys, have a good one and take it easy.